vraiment. A few videos ago, I did a test of the Phantom Reactor 600. I ran a pair of them and I ran a test tone of 20 Hz through to the two Phantom Reactors and I measured the power draw that it was drawing from the wall to see if it was going to draw 8200 watts. Now, it wasn't going to happen that way. Obviously, the relay, when they marketed the Phantom Reactors, they were marketing the audio output. The wattage is not really a function of how much power the M is pulling from the wall, but rather the amount of music output was definitely falsely marketing. Well, I think a viewer pointed out that no, it is a measurement of the sound output, not so much the power draw from the wall. But what could be useful is if we were actually going to be able to measure a regular power M and how much power it was pulling from the wall with respect to the RMS power rating that these vendors are quoting when they're selling the M. Today, what I have here is an Emotiva A700. This is a class ABM. It is seven channels. I'm going to turn it on and you hear the satisfying relay switching to power on a class ABM. Here it goes. So here, there is a 7 channel, 80 watts, all channel driven. It potentially is supposed to draw 560 watts of power from the wall when it's powering all 7 channels of 8 ohm speakers. The rating for 80 watts is for 8 ohms load. Now, I have recently gotten rid of a lot of my speakers, so I don't have many of them lying around. The only ones I left in the house, which are passive speakers, actually are in the ceiling right now. I did the test earlier and it was the whole room, the whole house was in a mess because I had to pull the cables into this M so that you can actually hear the speakers. There are four Yamaha 8-inch speakers with tweeters of course in the ceiling which I have pulled into this M and I'm pulling them only into two channels. So basically two channels are powering four speakers. Two speakers are wired in parallel and another two speakers wired in parallel to the other channel. So this effectively halves the load and it becomes a 4 ohm load. The speakers are rated for 8 ohms, but when you wire in parallel, the load of the speakers that it presents to the M becomes halved. So it is at 4 ohms. Now at 4 ohms, this M is supposed to deliver up to 210 watts of power. What we are presenting to the M now are the four speakers representing a 4 ohms load on each of the two channels. So we're not loading all seven channels. I don't physically have that many speakers to load the amp with now. Okay, so what I did was I went to a tone generator as suggested by one of our viewers, Peter, I believe. And uh, he said that you can generate the tone. So that's exactly what I did. I went to the site and I generated the tone to present itself to the amp to drive the four speakers. So I didn't actually film the whole thing because the whole room was so messy to write. The wires were running all over the place and it was really loud and I could not record anything meaningful in terms of sound coming from the ceiling or uh, from this amps or whatever you're going to hear from the speaker is going to sound pure garbage to you anyway. So I did those tests, I did the readings, I did the screen captures to show you what the power draw was. So bear in mind that this amp doesn't have a DSP. It's not going to detect that the cones are being overloaded and it will scale back the power output when it reaches that limit. This M doesn't know what speakers it's driving. So it's going to push whatever power to my ceiling speakers that it receives and it will just send it out at a full power rating. Now this is dangerous because I'm risking the speakers and if ceiling speakers go bust, it is actually a pain to replace them. I tried to be a little bit careful and I tried to increase the volume little bit by little bit and the result surprised me a little bit. The first test that I did to make it comparable to the Phantom Reactors was a 20 Hz tone. So I passed the 20 Hz tone into the M, I cranked the volume up slowly and I couldn't hear anything. Then I realized that my ceiling speakers aren't 
actually able to handle 20 hertz. So these speakers are rated from 50 hertz onwards. So that's exactly what I did. I set a tone of 50 hertz to be generated to be pushed to the M. And then I slowly increased the volume. As I gained confidence that the speakers weren't going to blow and the M was still holding up, I actually powered the volume all the way to 100%. And I had this power monitor that is being plugged into this M to check the power draw that it is pulling from the wall at any given point in time. So at 50 Hz, full volume, this guy, two channels driving four ceiling speakers was pulling 122 watts. And I was thinking that 50 Hz probably represents the biggest draw. And then I realized that the ceiling speakers, the speaker pair and this M, they're not mated well, the ceiling speakers, for all you know, could be more efficient at higher frequency rating. Now, 50 Hz is basically testing the floor limit. You don't know if actually it was able to put out higher volumes at higher frequencies, right? So at 50 Hz, I moved on to 60 Hz tone. When I generate the 60 Hz tone, again, I checked the power monitor, it came out to 134 watts. And that works out to be about 67 watts per channel. If we went according to Emotiva's spec, these were going to drive 110 watts per channel for two channels driven at eight ohms load. So next I went on to generate a tone of 70 hertz. And when I checked the app, the draw, the current the power draw of this amp was pulling 143 watts from the wall. So 50 hertz, 60 hertz, 70 hertz, the power draw was climbing. So I went on to do naturally 80 hertz. And at 80 hertz, it was drawing 155 watts. So the power draw kept going up, the consumption kept going up. And I thought, okay, this is actually counterintuitive. I would have thought that the lower frequencies would actually make the speakers draw and demand more power from the amp, but apparently not so. So at 50 hertz, I can only assume that the dB rating is already so low that it barely is able to move the cones much anymore. I could still hear it, it's not like the 20 hertz, which I couldn't hear anything at all. I could still hear it. Naturally, I didn't want to go 10 hertz at a time. I jumped straight to 100 hertz and wanted to see at 100 hertz, at full volume, full power, what this M was going to draw. Now, bear in mind, at 80 hertz, it was already kind of getting loud and irritating. At 100 hertz, well, my family was complaining, what is that noise? It, is, it, it was loud. The sound was going throughout the house and... That was the effect of this guy sending a 100 hertz tone to four of my ceiling speakers. And at that point in time, when I look at the power monitor, it was drawing 169 watts. That is very interesting. So it kept climbing up. I, I, and I had to do this, right? I went up to 120 hertz. And at 120 hertz, check again, 169 watts. Okay, so looks like it's not going down any further. But at 120 hertz, it was starting to get really loud and irritating. So I decided to just do two more tests. I promised the rest of the guys in the house saying that, okay, I'm just going to do two more tests and I'll be done in two minutes. Now, at 150 hertz, it was drawing 222 watts from the wall to power two channels. I had high hopes of what this guy would do at my final test of 200 hertz tone. I started trying to increase the volume and I said, okay, I'm going to crank it up all the way to 100%, take a quick reading and out I go and I'll end the test. So at 200 hertz, this unit drew 177 watts. Ah, so we finally reached the peak. We saw the ceiling. At 150 hertz tone, this guy was peaking out at 222 watts. So 222 watts satisfied me somehow. I know this M was rated to do two channels driven, 110 watts per channel at 8 ohms load with very little distortion. But this guy, I, there was no way I could measure distortion. And there was no way, you know, M's are a strange thing. You don't say that it's 110 watts and it will deliver 110 watts. It really depends on the amount of distortion that you are getting at that power draw. If it is highly distorted, if I could do a 20% distortion, yeah, sure, the thing could, you could rate this to go up even higher, but it is not meaningful for music anymore, which is why of late I've been varying towards the Sonos, the Devil Lace, because they are all in one unit. You don't have to mess with the matching of the M. 
with the speaker cones and to see whether they load well together, whether they are well paired together. And I have no more cables running around and they're completely wireless. There's a DSP there doing the thinking for me, protecting the drivers, protecting the M, basically making everything sound good without me having to try to match the source with the M with the speakers. So this M is the last of the few M's that I'm trying to get rid of. I have sold my Emotivas 3 channel M. Those were rated at 300 watts per channel. I've sold a Marantz. I've sold, I've sold many, many M's. So basically, this is the last power M that I have around in the house. It's probably going to go soon. So it's as timely as ever to shoot this video. Ceremoniously, you are going to see me turning off the power of this guy for the last time. Look at this beautiful LED lights. One bright one for each channel that is powering. And the power switch here, encircled by a blue LED glowing light too. Now what happens when I switch it off? You will hear the click. This is the relay switching of a class ABM. And then the LEDs will all go off. But this power button will turn and glow a soft amber instead of a blue. So for the last time, I'm going to turn this guy off and you are witness to me turning this off. Okay, here you go, the amber light. Very nice and very, very heavy, very well made. Pity to let it go, but as I told you, I don't really have speakers for this to drive anymore. My four ceiling speakers are being powered by a Sonos M, which brings me to the next point. I'm going to do a power draw of the Sonos M in the next video. Now, if you are interested to see the results of that test, do subscribe, ring the notification bell, so when my next video drops on that test, you'll be notified and you can see the result of my next test of the Sonos M driving my four ceiling speakers, presenting a four ohms load to each of the channel. Now, the Sonos M is capable of driving three pairs of speakers. In other words, six speakers. Mine are four. They sound glorious. They are being driven perfectly, but let the numbers do the talking. So if you find this video interesting, please do drop a like. If there are any questions that you have regarding this M versus my Sonos M versus my Emily's, please feel free to drop a note in the comment section below. Thank you very much and have a good day. One more. One more. Bye.